He has braved some of the most perilous situations in the world, but now his most intimidating assignment, dancing the cha-cha-cha on national television. It's political journalist Tucker Carlson and his professional partner, Elena Grenienko. My name is Tucker Carlson. I'm a journalist. I wrote for magazines and newspapers for about 10 years, and I've been in television news for about six. There are some unknown number of Israeli forces, the hundreds, maybe the thousands. When I first got the call about doing this, I thought oh, they must be calling the wrong guy. My dance experience consists of drinking too much at a couple rehearsal dinners. It's all about the wedding performance, baby. Dave Rubin, this is the Rubin Report. It is April 25th, 2023. We are live streaming on Rumble, YouTube, and Locals. If you have not joined us yet, at rubinreport.locals.com. What do I have to do? What do I have to do to make it happen? Please do join us post-game show after every show. You can ask me questions, comments. We do some now that it cannot be overstated. This Tucker Carlson leaving Fox, whether it was somewhat voluntarily or whether they pushed him out the door or whether it was a little bit of both, and perhaps we'll find out all the answers to that. It's actually irrelevant. Uh, it is causing a chain reaction throughout the system, not only through the media system, right? Cable news, streaming video, all of that, but throughout the political machine as well, because Tucker is a voice for an awful lot of people who do not otherwise have a voice, especially in a mainstream sense. This thing is heating up. Uh, I have some sense of, of where it could end up, but, uh, we shall see on that front, and we are going to unpack it today. We are going to unpack it by talking about what sort of put Tucker on the map. Uh, you know, and it has a little something to do with being brave. It has a little something to do with telling the truth. It has a little something to do with being outside of the system and trying to, as he would often talk about, you know, you can't necessarily blow up the whole system, but you can, uh, you can move it on the margins. And I think if you do that and you fight for what you believe in and you're authentic and then you get more people to replicate that across the way, I think that's actually how things get better. If more people acted on their good angels, uh, and I think there's a chance, you know, the Elon Twitter stuff, Tucker leaving, potentially going independent, you guys get it. Like all the pieces are here. And what do I often say? It's like, man, we've been all trying to piece together a puzzle. The puzzle pieces are all in front of us. We don't have the box. So we don't know exactly what we're trying to put together, but it's starting to take shape. Uh, and I think what happened yesterday and what now will transpire over the next couple of weeks related to this are gonna be a big marker in whatever that uh, puzzle is supposed to look like. Uh, before we get to any of that, let me talk to you guys about Moink Box. You guys know that 60% of US pork production comes from one company owned by the Chinese and their hogs are given something called ractopamine, which is banned in 160 countries, including China, yet you find it in your grocery aisle every day. Guys, there's a better way. I wanna tell you about Moink. That is moo plus oink. Moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork and chicken, and sustainable wild-caught Alaskan salmon straight to your door. You choose the meat delivered in every box, like ribeyes and chicken breasts, to pork chops and salmon fillets and much more. Plus, you can cancel any time. There's nothing better than cooking my meats on a Friday night on my big green egg. Shark Tank host Kevin O'Leary called Moink's bacon the best bacon he's ever tasted, and they guarantee you'll say, Oink, oink, I'm just so happy I got moinked. Keep American farming going by signing up at moinkbox.com slash Ruben right now. And listeners of this show get a free filet mignon in every order for a year. That's a year of the best filet mignon you'll ever taste. But for a limited time, M-O-I-N-K box.com slash Ruben, moinkbox.com slash Ruben. And now back to me. Okay, so Fox, Fox News, the big boy in cable news, right? Uh, they have just in the last week, week and a half, let go not only of Tucker Carlson, but also Dan Bongino. These are probably their two biggest guys. You could put Gutfeld, Gutfeld obviously number one in cable news. You can put him in there too. So let's say two of their three biggest guys right now. Uh, but the question is, and there was this Dominion lawsuit that they lost, and obviously there's been some ideological wrangling at Fox. Are we going to go all Trump? Is it going to be more DeSantis? Like, which way does this thing go? How much editorial control do the hosts have and all of those things? Uh, it's all up in the air right now. So let's, uh, let's start with some of the Tucker stuff. So the Daily Wire broke it yesterday. 
breaking Tucker Carlson out at Fox News Channel. And in their piece, I wanted to read just a bit for you. Uh, Tucker Carlson, Fox, Fox News Channel's biggest primetime star, has left the cable news giant. Fox News Media and Tucker Carlson have agreed to part ways, Fox News said in a statement. We thank him for his service to the network as a host and prior to that as a contributor. The network said Carlson had already hosted his last episode of Tucker Carlson Tonight. Mr. Carlson's last program was Friday, April 21st. The statement continued. Carlson was almost always at the top of the ratings in primetime, drawing a massive audience that often dwarfed several of his competitors combined. As the Daily Wire previously reported, Carlson's show in reruns often eclipsed the audience of original programming at other networks. A source told the Daily Wire Carlson's staff was blindsided by the news and only learned late Monday morning when members received an email from the primetime star. The popular host's abrupt exit comes just under a week after the network settled a lawsuit with Dominion Voting Systems for just under $800 million, narrowly avoiding a trial in which Carlson would have been expected to testify. The news of Carlson's departure comes just a week after syndicated radio host and former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino announced that he was leaving Fox News, citing a breakdown in contract negotiations. Folks, regretfully, last week was my last show on Fox News, uh, on the Fox News channel, Bongino said on his podcast at the time. So the show ending last week was tough, and I want you to know it's not some big conspiracy. I promise you, there's not, there's no acrimony. This wasn't some like WWE brawl that happened. We just couldn't come to terms on an extension, and that's really it, he added. For his part, Carlson has yet to publicly address the exit, and no reports have yet begun to circulate regarding any potential future plans. Okay, so look, for any of you that know anything about media, things will leak out, right? Like over the next weeks and months, we will find out more. And did this have something to do with the Dominion lawsuit? Did Tucker want to keep exploring election fraud and they just didn't want him to anymore? Did it have anything to do with his January 6th reporting? Like we will find out what happened here. Uh, but the fact that it happened so abruptly and that it was from a guy, this wasn't like just getting rid of like some random person in daytime or even some, you know, remote, you know, decently, let's say rated host. This is the number one guy in the history of cable news. He took over the slot from Bill O'Reilly, who had been number one for like 15 years in a row. And then he increased on that. Nobody really thought that was going to happen. And then obviously he was deeply connected to the Trump thing and the MAGA thing and the, and the, the populist ideal and the anti-war movement. So he was doing something that other cable news hosts, even on his own network, were not doing. Now, what he did not have at Fox is total and ultimate control. How do I know that? Well, here he is in my house, in my garage, when I lived in Los Angeles. This is 2018, so about five years ago. Here is Tucker and I talking about independence and what I had at the time that he did not have at the time. Tucker Carlson, welcome to the Ruben Hey, Report. Dave. I am glad to have you here, my friend. I'm glad to be here. I love this. I, I don't know that anyone has ever walked in here and been more impressed by the Ruben Because I work in television, so I know what this is, and it's just the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Are you jealous? Are you joking? Yes, I'm jealous. You have millions and millions of viewers. I drive across. You have a massive staff. <laughs> but I don't have the control that you have, which is wonderful. Yeah, control. But I don't have the control that you have, which is wonderful. So I think Tucker has already tipped off to us what he really wants. He wants that ultimate control. Now, I have no idea if Fox and Tucker Carlson or Tucker Carlson's producers had gotten into any fights over control. Uh, but the simple fact is when you work for somebody else, when someone else signs the paychecks uh, and there's an editorial staff at Fox News and everything else, there is some level of control, whether it's tacit or obvious or subtle or whatever it might be. Uh, he did not own the property. That's why he, they were able to end the contract with him. So five years ago, Tucker's sitting in my garage in Los Angeles going, man, you're doing it the right way. Well, subsequently in these last five years, obviously the independent creator movement has absolutely exploded. So I think... 
I just put that there as a little, I just want you to put a little pin in that one as we explore what happens over the next couple of weeks and as Tucker makes some announcements, which I'm sure are coming, uh, because I sense we know uh, where Tucker will go, but we shall see. I want to talk to you about the media reaction to all of that. And also, let's not forget, guys, the other thing that happened yesterday is that Don Lamont, also known as Don Lemon, but Tucker's been calling him Don Lamont for years, he got canned at CNN like an hour later. What a whack wacky, wacky day in media yesterday was. So we're going to get to a whole bunch of reaction on all this and how it affects the political situation uh, because these things are deeply, deeply intertwined. Before we do that, let me talk to you about Phoenix Capital. You know, guys, with banks collapsing and turbulent, the turbulent state of the stock market, millions of Americans have watched their retirement savings disappear. I want to share with you a unique investment opportunity that is not only protecting retirement savings, but investors are seeing consistent yields and growth. Phoenix Capital Group is offering high value U.S. oil and gas investments through their corporate bonds. It's a way for people to invest in energy assets and diversify their portfolio. Yields range from 8% to 12% APY paid monthly with different qualifications and maturity dates. Phoenix Capital Group is a tech-led energy company owning in some of the most lucrative basins across America. Investor capital along with their own capital goes towards cash flow positive oil and gas projects. They had the choice of offering a significantly lower interest rate and paying the difference to middlemen, but decided to break the mold and bring stronger investments directly to investors. These 8 to 12% APY corporate bonds are higher than CDs or annuities, often more than double the typical yields. So if you're looking for an alternative investment with sizable yields and monthly payment options, I highly recommend checking out Phoenix Capital Group's bond offerings. To learn more, download their free investor guide at phxonrubin.com, phxonrubin.com, and tell them Dave sent you. All right, let's talk about the media reaction because shocker, shocker, a certain amount of people are very, very excited that Tucker Carlson will not be on Fox News tonight at 8 p.m. Uh, let's start with the shrieking harpies at The View because the news broke while they were on air. You know, The View is on right now. Some of you know this. It's 11 a.m. Eastern. That's when we do this show every day. That's the same time that The View is on. That means there are people, mostly housewives, eating bonbons, watching The View right now. So we broke the news live on air because we heard about it just as it was breaking. The View did as well. Our reactions were, uh, I would say, slightly different. Word has just come down that Fox News Media and Tucker Carlson have agreed to part ways. <laughs> they thank him for his service to the network and host of a prior contributor. Wave. <gasps> We'll talk more about it tomorrow because, but we wanted to make sure that we let you know what was going well, on. Well, can I, can I ask the audience if they'll help me do something? <laughs> Come on, folks. Na, 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 <laughs> na, na, na. Anna Navarro. You know, on any given day, you can honestly argue that each one of them is the worst host. I know I've been more of a Sonny Hostin is like a psychopath, deranged, lunatic, racist, but Anna, I like on any given day, you just never know. Poor Joy wasn't even there for it yesterday. Must've been getting her face rearranged. Anywho, uh, the short-sightedness of these women is really extraordinary because they're, they're applauding that a guy that they don't like, who has a different viewpoint than them, even though the show is called The View and Barbara Walters originally set it up so that you'd hear different views, different points of view from different people, which is the reverse of what the show has become. Uh, what they seem to not realize is that Tucker is now, right at this moment, bigger than he's ever been. He's bigger than he was two days ago, and he was pretty freaking huge two days ago. He's not going away, right? He's not disappearing. He's not going to not have a show or not be involved in media or politics. He's probably going to do something much bigger. If you strike me down, Darth, I will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Watch Star Wars, ladies. Do you not get it? Don't you know how this thing works? But okay, you can sing and applaud and get your temporary little win. But I assure you, ladies, it will not last long. Uh, here's CNN uh, covering Tucker leaving. Uh, it's Anderson Cooper and 
Democrat strategist Paul Begala, and he's, uh, well, this is, this is wonderful analysis. I can't imagine why nobody watches this crap. Do, do the remaining hosts at Fox, whoever replaces Tucker Carlson, is there any, there's no incentive to tone down their own rhetoric, is there? No, they're not going to change. I think right-wing media in the last 25 years has been all about the Overton window, right? What was unacceptable 20 years ago, Tucker didn't say any of those things when I worked with him at Crossfire, is now mainstream conservative media, and it's only going to get more. Here's, okay, you know what I'd like to see? Here's how we'll know that Fox has changed. They won't do it. Fox has changed if they replace Tucker with an undocumented Mexican immigrant. That would actually truly be a great replacement. Um, I can't imagine that Maria Bartiromo is sleeping well tonight. I mean, is that funny? It wasn't funny. Okay, I just had to check. Yeah, it's not funny. Uh, but putting aside that it's not funny, you know, Fox News, even without Tucker, is still going to have better ratings than CNN and Anderson Cooper and the rest of it, right? They still have a bunch of hosts there that people still love, right? A certain set of people still love uh, Hannity. Tons and tons of people still love Greg Gutfeld and what's going on over at The Five and all of that. Um, would they tone down the rhetoric? Fox is the only, look, regard, you may be angry at Fox right now, and I think there's reasons to be angry at Fox for sure. Um, we will find out the specifics of some of that and actually what happened. Like, I don't know, for all, you know, if Tucker, if Tucker beat a woman or something and that's why he's leaving, then, then it's a different situation. There's no reason to, to believe that. You, you understand what I'm saying? Um, but that Fox should tone down the rhetoric is a ridiculous comment from someone at CNN, not only because Fox gets better ratings, but because what he really means is they should tone down the rhetoric. They should stop fighting for anything remotely close to conservative values or for anything related to the Republican Party or anything else. They should just be like us. They should just be like us. Like, would, would CNN ever say MSNBC should tone down the rhetoric while they're demonizing the hell out of parents who want to be involved in their children's education or whatever they're lying about DeSantis on on any given day? He would never say that because left-wing rhetoric can be as hot as possible. Uh, but right-wing rhetoric, we should just be getting beaten and bludgeoned all day long and just sit there and take it. One of the reasons that the ladies of The View are so excited that he's leaving and that, Tuck, uh, that Anderson Cooper is focused on his rhetoric and the rhetoric of the network is because he was making a difference. He was making a dent in their hegemonic control of the media and, and, I, and mainstream culture's minds. And guess what? Once again, ladies, he's going to be bigger than ever before. Uh, but that did not stop uh, the televised mental institution known as MSNBC. You know, this Nicole Wallace, she's one of the worst. She's no, she's not Joy Reid level. I'm not going crazy here today, uh, but she's quite horrible. Uh, here she is uh, explaining a bit about why it'll be good that Tucker Carlson will be off Fox News. From election denialism and its violent manifestation, January 6th insurrection, to Vladimir Putin's propaganda about Ukraine, which has seeded opposition to the United States' response to the largest land war in Europe since World War II, to conspiracies about COVID-19 and the vaccine and mask wearing, to the discussion around replacement theory, which has actually been cited in the manifestos of mass shooters. It is fair to say it is not hyperbolic at all to argue that Tucker Carlson is the through line for all of them. He's a champion of conspiracy theories, and until today, he had one of the largest audiences in cable news for disseminating them. I mean, it's really just incredible what they're doing on MSNBC on a daily basis. You almost have to admire the evil. They lie about everything, and then they constantly play a shell game so their audience thinks that everyone else is lying about everything. Just to quickly go through a couple of the things that she's accusing uh, Tucker of, election denialism. Well, first off, you were allowed to question. This is still America, and you're allowed to question what happens in elections. You absolutely are. Okay, that's number one. Uh, January, uh, January 6th, okay, we've already, this thing was not an insurrection. There were no plans. We know cops were letting people in. I'm not even gonna entertain that one anymore. Putin and Ukraine, it's the largest ground war in Europe. Okay, that doesn't mean you have to be for it. Uh, that doesn't mean the United States should endlessly fund it, which is what he was complaining about, or that we should be in a war. As Joe Manchin said, we're in this war. It's odd because we don't have congressional approval on that thing. So he was an anti-war voice that used to be what the left was all about, anti-war. Remember, it was supposed to be mean Republicans and conservatives who were for wars across the world. Uh, but somehow being anti-war means you're a Putin puppet, uh, that he spread conspiracies on COVID-19 and vaccine mandates. You guys did all the lying on that, that he was skeptical about 
vaccines and mandates and everything else. And that she dare, like, after all that we now know, that she can stare into that camera and just read what's put in front of her, because that's what she does. She's just reading off a prompter. And that, she, like, like, how soulless do you have to be to do all that? You may not like Tucker Carlson. You may not like his political views. You may not like him personally or whatever. But to lie, you lied once to your audience about all of these things, Trump, Russia, and collusion, and you hid the Hunter, the Hunter laptop and, and COVID. You lied about all that. Now, one guy who is doing something a little closer to the truth on all of that stuff gets canned. You're ecstatic about it, and you'll lie to your audience again about it, despite the fact that so much, so much of it has been debunked. It is rather extraordinary, people. And again, you don't have to like what they're doing, uh, but uh, don't hate the hate the game, hate the uh, wait, don't hate the player, hate the game. You know what I mean? Like, it's just these people are just terrible. Let's talk about fast growing trees, and then we'll get to more on all this. Guys, breathe some life into your own backyard with fastgrowingtrees.com this spring. From shade to fresh fruit to privacy and natural beauty, let fastgrowingtrees.com help you plant your dream garden with their expert advice and fast, reliable shipping. Fastgrowingtrees.com's plant experts curate thousands of easy to grow plant, shrub and tree varieties for your unique climate, Meyer lemons to evergreens and everything in between. No more waiting in long lines and hauling heavy plants around with fastgrowingtrees.com. You order online and your plants arrive at your door in a couple days. I love fast, fast growing trees. When, uh, when we got here, we planted a whole bunch. We got lemon, we got lime, we got, uh, well, we got some avocado, a whole bunch of stuff. You should check them out. I can't recommend them enough. And with fast growing trees, 30 day alive and thrive guarantee, you know everything will look great fresh out of the box. Join over 1.5 million happy fast growing tree customers. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash Ruben right now and get 15% off your entire order. 15% off at fast growing trees dot com slash Ruben. Okay, so now let's go back to Fox, right? I could I could spend all day long showing you the the fake and faux joy that these people are showing. Well, I can't say it's fake. They're, they're showing, I would say, short-term joy. Uh, but as you know, this will not work out for them in the end. But we could do all day on The View and CNN and MSNBC clapping their hands over this. Uh, but let's focus on uh, where this thing all started and where this takes Fox going forward, because this is going to hurt Fox. Everyone knows it, but I don't think everyone knows why. Uh, Fox will find talent. They are a massive, unbelievably massive, influential, giant corporation with millions and millions of eyeballs. And even if the landscape is shape, uh, changing rapidly, and even if more and more people are tuning into shows like this, and more and more people are cutting the cord and everything else, They've got cash, they've got resources, they have business plans, they have influence, all of those things, right? Uh, they also have a digital side. They have Fox Nation. So there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that they have there. They're not going to just disappear. Uh, but in a way, they are amplifying new media platforms as well because uh, things like Rumble are blowing up right now. Bongino, who left Fox, is going all in on Rumble. He's been all in on Rumble. Uh, before, but now he's going all in on it. And you guys know, not only am I there and Crowder's there and Glenn Greenwald's there and Russell Brand's there. It's like, if you took those names and you threw Tucker into the mix, you've got a bigger network than Fox, MSNBC, and CNN combined overnight. So the question is, are, are, is there a way that a network basically of independent creators is actually better than an old school broadcast cable network, right? A new platform and an alternative vision altogether. Uh, so where will Tucker Carlson end up? Well, Dan Bongino had a tweet that I thought was rather straight to the point. He wrote Rumble. Uh, then Asaf Lev, who's the CEO of Locals, my co-founder of Locals, corporate media is dying. Independent creators are the future of media. I agree. Then Chris Pavlovsky, who is the CEO of Rumble. I'm going to take it a step further. Corporate media died today. Independent creators are now the lead. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Let's go with another tweet from Chris. Cable television is now completely controlled speech. Rumble is the only bastion for authentic speech. All right, guys, so what is the point here? The point is we can move mountains right now. There is an opportunity. You get opportunity every now and again, and you usually don't know when it's coming, right? But all of us that were in this calcified thing, just think back to Trump in 2015. We all knew something was wrong. We didn't know what it was. Then Trump comes in and blows up the machine. I haven't been that thrilled with Trump lately, but I give credit where credit is due. 
And that's what this situation with Tucker is doing as well. This connection between corporate media and the New York Times and big tech and all of these things, it's, it's had little holes punched through with it, through it, with Elon at Twitter and now with Tucker and with the explosion of, say, what we're doing here, Crowder and all these things. Like these things, it's, it's all happening, but sometimes you need that extra rocket fuel. Uh, but the truth is, guys, it's up to nobody but you to decide what the market demands and where the product is consumed. That's what we've been seeing over and over again. For the past century, the product has been you, the viewer, and news has mostly been free, right? So you just tune into something, they'd show you advertisements on it, and that was it. Uh, but you consume advertisements in exchange for free centralized corporate content, right? Eventually, we, we all realize this. When I always tell you, when you're watching MSNBC and you know they know they're lying, well, what are they doing? They're not acting as news people. They're not even, they're not acting as journalists or impartial. Uh, even even the, the opinion people, they know that they're lying. So they're, they're in the business actually of lying. They're in the business of servicing the machine. And when the machine does not need you anymore, say Brian Stelter, Don Lemon, this machine then gets rid of you. But the corporate press basically is selling you to the advertisers. So I'm telling you, this is what we are going to do. And I had, did not speak to Tucker yesterday. I'm telling you just the way the world is going. And I think Tucker is going to be part of it. If you can consum- consume content at Rumble, an uncensored platform, then you're effectively kneecapping these outdated corporate press enterprises, right? If you're saying, I will watch the show on Rumble instead of YouTube, which is a part of the problem, you're departing the corporate press and you're making them bleed. And if you don't believe me, uh, just look what's happened in the last couple of weeks. You have a chance to affect things. What happened uh, with Bud Light? You know exactly what happened with Bud Light. They go all in on this trans influencer, which I don't even know if she's had the surgery and we're not gonna do any Googling about it today. But this guy who dresses up as a chick and pretends to be the worst stereotype of a woman, uh, she, she, he, I hate this stupid stuff, uh, Dylan Mulvaney then becomes the Bud Light spokesperson. And then because of you guys, because the, the average person said, I have had just about enough of this, Bud Light stock dropped about, they lost about $7 billion in market share. It sounds like they've gotten a little bit of it back, probably about $4 billion right now. Uh, here's Savannah Hernandez. I've had her on the show, uh, I believe, one or two times. Uh, who's, she often goes out to colleges and she tries to red pill uh, you know, these leftist college students in real time. She was on Tim Pool's podcast last night. Uh, and I think she made a really good point about how to get wins and that, dare I say it, but the right conservatives, whatever you want to call them, are actually doing the right thing. But it's not just because of Tucker and Tim, it's because of you. 20% of people no longer buy beer, then Bud Light's market cap will drop by 20% and stay there. And once it stabilizes 20% lower, it, they will say the, de- the, the boycott's over, the decline in sales has ended, despite the fact what really happened is no one is coming back to buy their beer. Yeah, right, right. And you know what? I will say, too, I actually am uh, proud of the right wing for, you know, sticking it to Anheuser-Busch and actually sending this message because typically in the past, I feel like we get angry about things, but we're Internet warriors and that's about it. So, I mean, seeing the pushback on this uh, has been great. And uh, I think it has sent a message to a lot of other corporations as well. And they're going to start being more careful about uh, what they're advertising. Okay, so I think you see the connection I'm trying to make here. We don't know whether Tucker voluntarily left or they pushed him out the door, whether there was a little bit of both, but there's a game changing moment happening in television media and and let's say online media. Then if you connect that with the fact that a game changing moment happened just last week with this massive boycott, people are not gonna go back to Bud Light. Like you can feel it, Samantha's right. This is different than usually people just tweet about things and I'm so angry about something and I threw my Keurig coffee machine in the garbage. Something is different right now. And these, these wins, these little moments, they start sticking together. And then, then something can start taking form. So this is the result of you, the non-woke consumer, the decision maker, the person with a little autonomy over your life and your dollars uh, saying to the market, hey, I would not like to be abused relentlessly anymore. And then you know what happens after that? Then the market does some different things. So we've got some info here from the Daily Wire. 
Bud Light marketing VP takes leave of absence amid Dylan Mulvaney controversy. That was the woman who uh, set up the whole thing in the first place, who we played the video of her last week, you remember, who was basically saying, we don't like the frat boys that are drinking Bud Light, so we want it to be more diverse. And here we go. Well, she's now okay. She's out. Little more from the Daily Wire. Anheuser-Busch places another top marketing executive on leave after Bud Light transgender controversy. So now do you see it, guys? That didn't happen solely because Tucker talked about it or because Bongino talked about it or any of us talked about it, even though we did. It was because people heard the message, they were fed up enough, and then they walked into the supermarket and they said, today I will have Connor beer, please. Coors Light instead of Bud Light. You can probably do better than Coors Light, people, but people made choices. So what else has happened? You have to look no further than corporate press outlets. When ratings are falling in crazy ways because of their increasing partisanship, the outlet eventually has to make radical changes. This is exactly what's happening at CNN, right? They're firing people left and right. Lemon, Stelter, a whole bunch of other people. They're saying we're gonna not be as partisan as we were. Uh, well, we've got a little info on how it's all working out for CNN at the moment. Uh, this is from Forbes. February marked CNN's lowest rated month in a decade with the network's primetime lineup dropping 42% among viewers 25 to 54, the key demographic group valued by advertisers compared to the same month one year ago. For full day ratings, Fox News easily won the month with an average of total audience of 1.437 million viewers, down 14% from a year ago, followed by MSNBC, 711,000 viewers, down just 1%, and CNN, 474,000 viewers, down 24%. CNN's struggling morning show, CNN This Morning, averaged 360,000 total viewers and just 73,000 viewers in the key demo in February, the show's lowest rated month since it launched last fall. The show debuted in November, ratings to lower than the show it had replaced, New Day, and has failed to make much traction since then, with critics noting that instead of chemistry, the hosts, Caitlin Collins, Don Lemon, and Poppy Harlow, often talk over each other. The show also suffered from Lemon making sexist comments in a discussion about Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley's age, saying Haley isn't in her prime because at 51, women are considered to be in their prime in their 20s and 30s and maybe 40s. Lemon apologized off air, but his remarks led CNN chief executive Chris Licht to tell staff, I sat down with Don and had a frank and meaningful conversation. Licht said an internal memo. He has agreed to participate in, in formal training as well as continuing to listen and learn. We take this very seriously. Flash forward two months and Don Lemon tweeted this. I was informed this morning by my agent that I have been terminated by CNN. I am stunned. After 17 years at CNN, I would have thought that someone in management would have had the decency to tell me directly. At no time was I given any indication that I would not be able to continue to do the work I have loved at the network. It is clear that there are some larger issues at play. With that said, I want to thank my colleagues and the many teams I have worked with for an incredible run. They are the most talented journalists in the business and I wish them all the best. And within moments of that statement, CNN had to refute him because that was fake news. Here's from CNN comms. Don Lemon's statement about this morning's events is inaccurate. He was offered an opportunity to meet with management, but instead released a statement on Twitter. So again, guys, I wanna connect what's going on here. We are seeing alternative platforms blow up. We are seeing that you, the consumer, has a little bit of clout by making choices yourself because if you start doing it, then other people start doing it. And then what happens? Bud Light loses money and new beers will be out there or people will drink tequila perhaps or whatever it else might be. You stop watching CNN and stop swallowing their propaganda and then the propagandists like Brian Stelter and Don Lemon actually get fired and it all starts burning down. This is good. This is all good. Uh, so now you might wonder, well, Dave, I'm just a casual news consumer. I, I never thought that Don Lemon was really that terrible. I thought he was uh, pretty good. Why, why would you take him off air? He's a decent fella. You know, is this some sort of racist homophobic situation? Do you have some videotape perhaps that might show us that Don Lemon was terrible? I do. Here you go. 
The word on the street is that you guys aren't allowed to be liberal anymore. Is that, is that the case? I don't think we ever were liberal. What? Yes. I'm not a political person. I'm a person who lives in reality. I'm a journalist. We have to stop demonizing people and realize the biggest terror threat in this country is white men, and we have to start doing something about them. There is no white guy ban. So what do we do about that? A woman is considered to be in her prime in her 20s and 30s and maybe 40s. What are you that's talking about? Wait. I, that's not according to me. If you Google when is a woman in her prime, it'll say 20s, 30s, and 40s. It says it right in the name, Antifa, anti-fascism, which is what they were there um, fighting. Listen, there's, you know, no organization is perfect. There is some violence. Right now, our democracy is in danger, and it's because of one party, and that's the Republican Party. The only party now that is operating in reality is the Democratic Party. Open your eyes, America. Open your eyes. We are teetering on a dictatorship. They are America's first couple. The closest thing that we have to royalty, President Barack Obama and the First Lady Michelle Obama. Just objectively speaking, I was like, oh my gosh, Nancy Pelosi is a boss. And let's not forget, if anyone is judging this, I'm not judging this, our country was started because this is how the Boston Tea Party rioting this is how this country was started all right look with any luck that's the last non lemon clip we ever have to show you like he's, he's got a lot of money just like go disappear retire don you know he'll he'll show up on some third rate network okay fine but hopefully we'll just be able to ignore him but just remember he always purported to be a journalist i just want to reiterate one more time i do not pretend to be a journalist I am not a journalist. I am not out in the field fact-finding and all of those things. I am attaining information throughout the day the way any of us attain information. And then I apply my philosophy and my thoughts to it and I communicate that stuff to you. I don't hide what my biases are, right? He was always hiding what his biases are, but doing it quite poorly. So he did not deserve to be on a network that is supposed to be unbiased or at least say it, say what your bias is, say I am an opinion show, but they got too lost in that, that took out Stelter too. And, and thankfully, again, less and less people are paying attention to this nonsense. So the question is how can we enact this market demanding model across the board so that we can really change things? Cause it is happening in front of our eyes. Well, I got a couple ideas. Number one, we can keep doing it to woke companies like Bud Light, stop, paying for your demise. It's why I canceled Disney Plus. So when my kids are old enough and they wanna watch the original Lion King, we'll figure it out. I'm gonna have to go to my parents' house, in the basement, in the back room, by the furnace, open up the box, find the VHS tape. I'm gonna have to find a VCR. I'm gonna have to find a cable that'll connect it to my TV because the cables don't match anymore. And I'm gonna watch, the kid can watch Lion King, but I will not pay Disney to do it. I will not drink Bud Light. Again, I'm a tequila guy, but maybe you should stop drinking Bud Light. Number two, what can you do? You can keep doing it to woke mainstream media corporations like CNN. Tune out. And I know I'm t if I'm talking to you, you're not watching these things a lot, but you have family members who do. You have husbands and wives who you come home and they're watching CNN and you go, Jesus Christ, again with that. But we've got to just convince more and more people to tune out of the nonsense because it is brainwashing people into hysteria. Number three, this is the one I really like, how about we offer better alternatives to the truth tellers like Tucker? And even if you don't like Tucker, and even if someone's not offering truth, let's say, how about we just create more pipes, more avenues for people to do what they want? And if it is good and if it is valuable, people will tune in. Somehow, I don't know how, but somehow 10 years ago, I started getting on this idea that there was a way to do it myself. And that was the future of all of these things. And not to pat myself on the back, but that's why Tucker Carlson, who had the number one rated show in the world at that time, news show, walked into my house, even though he's making 50 times the, the money I'm making and everything else, and was jealous of what I had. In the inscription of the book, that was for his book, uh, Ship of Fools, in the inscription, he wrote, Dave, you're doing it for all the suckers who are still in offices. Like, how cool is that? And now, I then created Locals, we merged with Rumble, and we have the pipes to now set him free. How freaking awesome is that? Pretty cool, we just did it for Crowder too. Not bad, not bad. Number four, how about, this is the segue to the next part of the show, how about we not only do it when it comes to what you're buying and what you're watching, but we start doing it politically as well. Now, let's talk about presidential politics. 
because as Bloomberg reported yesterday, Joe Biden officially launches bid for re-election in 2024. To be clear, before we show you the video, Joe Biden will be 82 years old in 2024. Joe Biden has some form of dementia or some other cognitive problem. Uh, Dr. Jill Biden, his wife does not care, despite the fact that she's a very important and very influential doctor. And Joe Biden is basically the perfect vessel for all these ridiculous uh, woke ideas. That's all he is. He is just a sort of brainless, swamp creature zombie who puts out whatever, reads whatever they want him to read, often poorly, mumbles and stumbles. He has no real support. He's sort of just perfect for what they are ushering in. But what's interesting about this is everyone kind of knows it. There are very few hardcore Joe Biden supporters. The voter market, if you want to talk about the market and market share related to beer, related to what people watch, well, how about related to voting too? The market does not want him to run. Uh, so let's not give it to him. Here's Chuck Todd on NBC, even admitting that most people do not want Joe Biden's run. More than half of the people who voted for him in 2020. 53% of 2020 Biden voters say he shouldn't run. 64% of Democrats who voted for Sanders or Warren in the 2020 primaries think he shouldn't run. And 76% of voters under 35 think he shouldn't run. And what's the top concern for that? We asked voters. We didn't prompt them. We said, why don't you think he should run? Well, these were the responses. It almost is all about his age and his ability to do the job. Again, these are among Democratic primary voters. I want to just hit something again about the age because this is just going to keep coming up and keep coming up. I do generally believe that at 82 years old, uh, you should not be president of the United States. Like, it's just time to go be a grandfather, not that those grandchildren want to be near him with the sniffing of the hair and all that stuff. Uh, but like, it's just too old. But I would also say in the world that we live in now, where the last 20 years have, have been an absolute revolution of technology and information and communication, the idea that Joe Biden is going to lead us to the other side of that is so stagnated and so crazy and so it's such a broken, nonsensical idea that again, I think it's perfect for the Democrats because they don't want the new world to be ushered in. They want a world to be ushered in that will be of more centralized control and of more power over your decisions and much more. Uh, but it is not specifically about his age. And I just do wanna say that one more time. My problem with Joe Biden, it really isn't, despite, I think you can make an, a good argument about that, right? He grew up in a completely different world. We need leaders who are somewhere in their 40s and 50s, even into their 60s right now. I would take late 30s too. Somewhere in that 30, 40 year age range where you're still in your prime of all these things, you've gotten the youth part out of the way, you're not in your, your the dawn, you're, you're not in the, the sunset of the situation, right? Uh, but you are, in the, you are able physically and mentally to do all of it. And that's just not Joe Biden, even if he had the right ideas. It's just not Joe Biden. On top of the fact that he obviously have cognitive problems. He's shaking hands with nobody. He's wandering around. They don't know where the hell he is. He's taking orders from the Easter Bunny. We got problems, people. Uh, so you know what you could do? You know what you could do? If you're watching this, I think you've probably made up your mind already, but you could not vote for Biden. You could not support Biden. You could try to convince your friends who are supporting the Democrats or Joe Biden that there are better people out there. And you might wanna to say to the, some of them, the ones who were like, you know, I, I, I'm actually not against uh, Donald Trump's policies. I just don't like his mean tweets and his attitude. If, he, if there was only somebody that had similar policies that seemed like a nice guy, uh, who didn't tweet a lot and didn't get into all the personal attacks and the over-the-top nonsense, if only such a guy existed. And then you could say to them, oh, you know, a guy does exist. Hannity had him on his show last night from Japan. And I have one follow-up. So I've said from the election of 2022, when people started asking me, uh, we got a, a legislative session that we're working on. We've got a few more weeks to go with that. We're going to be putting up a lot of wins on the board. And so I'm not going to be making any announcements before that's concluded. OK, are you leaning one way or another? Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that got a good, that got a good chuckle. OK, so look, we shall see if DeSantis gets in. 
as you know, I don't have to smack you over the head with it. I, I think he's the right guy to get us through this. It is a combination of all of the things I'm talking about. He's fought the corporations, Disney and one. He's fought the political establishment and turned Florida solidly red. He's not giving in to the media nonsense and he's boycotting talks with NBC because they keep lying about him. He's not feeding the beast endlessly. He's personally barely on social media. So he's focused on the mission. He's younger, three kids, good wife, like it all kind of fits, but okay. So what's the point of all this? Well, guys, if we, the market, we, the consumer, if we truly support who we wanna support with our honest actions, as opposed to our closeted beliefs, right? If we put the stuff into action, then we can actually make the world a better place. There will be platforms like Rumble that are gonna allow us to do that because we're not gonna fear censorship. What have we all been fearing for these, these years, right? It's that we'd either be shadow banned or kicked off uh, this platform or that platform, or that you'd be fired from your job if you didn't get uh, injected with something or all of those things. So we were all fearing this stuff, but we're getting to the other side of it. We really are. And it's, by the way, a lot of pain points on the way to the other side, but I believe it guys, the truth will set you free. I don't think I'm the first person to say that, probably the second, but here's another guy saying something like that. His name, Tucker Carlson. And once you say one true thing and stick with it, all kinds of other true things occur to you. The truth is contagious, lying is, but the truth is as well. And the second you decide to tell the truth about something, you are filled with this, I don't wanna get supernatural on you, but you are filled with this power from somewhere else. Try it, tell the truth about something. You feel it every day. The more you tell the truth, the stronger you become. That's completely real. It's measurable in the way that you feel. And of course, the opposite is also true. The more you lie, the weaker and more terrified you become. We all know that feeling. You lie about something and all of a sudden you're a prisoner of that lie. You are diminished by it. You are weak and afraid. Drug and alcohol use is the same way. It makes you weak and afraid. But you look around and you see these people and some of them really have paid a heavy price for telling the truth. And they are cast out of their groups, whatever those groups are, but they do it anyway. And I look on at those people with the deepest possible admiration. I am paid to do that. I face no penalty. Someone came up to me, you're so brave, really? I'm a talk show host. <laughs> it's like I can have any opinion I want. That's my job, that's why they pay me. It's not brave to tell the truth on a cable news show. And if you're not doing that, you're really an idiot. You're really craven. You're lying on television, why would you do that? You're literally making a living to say what you think and you can't even do that? Please. I mean, is that a nice summation of a bunch of the stuff that I talk about on this show every day? Tell the truth, see what happens. He's right, it is measurable. Jordan Peterson talks about this all the time. It's measurable at a physiological level because when you put truth out to the world, the world starts ordering itself. And the idea that there are these people, and you, we don't have to go through who they are, we showed you some clips of them, that they get up there and they lie constantly and then they applaud the supposed demise of the truth tellers and they get paid handsomely for it. I think their day is coming to a close. I really do. We are in an interesting battle and an interesting battle is not won in a day, right? Elon, Tucker, Rumble, all of these things are part of a new world being born. And I am very excited that you are on the journey with me on that uh, new world. Uh, speaking of new worlds, I'm, I'm going pretty old world for the next uh, week and a half or so. Uh, I leave tomorrow. I am going to the Holy Land, the Promised Land, the other Promised Land. I'm in the real Promised Land right here in Florida, but I'm going to the other Promised Land, uh, Israel. Uh, and I'm gonna have a couple speaking events. I have a live one May 4th, uh, in Tel Aviv, which we will, uh, I sent out a tweet about, we'll be promoting all over the place. I'll be speaking at a couple forums there and we're b bouncing all over the country and doing some interviews. And uh, actually it sounds like on Thursday, uh, Governor DeSantis is gonna be there. So I'm gonna try to get to an event that he's doing. Sounds like some congressional Republicans will also be there. So we're gonna do some stuff related to America, but really focus on the historical sites and a bunch more. We're gonna put up a ton of content for you guys while we're there. I've pre-taped a couple interviews. We pre-taped tomorrow's show 
and Thursday's show for you already. So we got a Q&A &A and, and a panel show coming for you. So we're not going to leave you hanging. Uh, and I'm very excited to, so we're going to do about 10 days in Israel, then about four days in Budapest. I'll be doing a show with Jordan Peterson in Budate Budapest. I'll be speaking at the Danube Institute. A couple other things happening there. So just stay tuned. And if you're in Israel or hungry, I'd love to meet you. And we're going to, you know, be out there and we'll do some meetups and meet up at bars and beaches and whatever might be happening. Finally, people, if you haven't subscribed at rumble.com slash Ruben Report, I mean, did I give you a hard enough sell today? It's the future. I think uh, there might be something cooking with Tucker. Hey, I can't say anything else. What do I know? What do I don't? I don't know nothing, okay? Uh, and if you want to join us for a post-game show uh, in about a minute, join us at rubenreport.locals.com. Part one of my interview with Constantine Kissin is up on YouTube and Rumble right now. Full things up over at Locals, absolutely ad-free. And oh, I guess I lied and I have to correct myself. I said earlier in the show, we may not have to show you any more Don Lemon. I forgot what the cold close was. The cold close is just more lemon. <laughs> this is, I have to retract what I just said to you. So I apologize in advance. Here's a little more lemon and we'll see everybody on the other side. It's one of the co-hosts of CNN This Morning, Donald Lemon. Black people, if you really want to fix the problem, here's just five things that you should think about doing. Is it fair to say this, because I'm not a mommy, but is it mommy brain? Have you ever considered that you may just be perpetuating the stereotype the master intended, acting like a She did not say that. She did not say that. She did say it. She did not. She said it. Can we get back shot. to soccer? The men's team makes more money because, you know men, why? because people are more interested but in- he can... bow, bow, bow. What are you drinking there, Don? What you... uh, a little Tito's soda. Walking around with your ass and your underwear showing is not okay. Smollett testified that anchor, CNN anchor Don Lemon, texted him at the time of the attack, sharing information that the Chicago Police Department did not believe Smollett's account of what happened. Just because you can have a baby, it doesn't mean you should. I'm not sexist, by the way. I don't mean to be crude, okay? Yeah. There are ways not to perform oral sex if you oh. don't want to do it. I used to date her. I gotta say, everywhere I go, and you know what I'm gonna ask you, People say, hey, that guy's on your show. Is he really running for president? But just because you have the right, does it mean that you should? No, 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 just come here. No, no, I just want to ask you something. Come here, tell me, come here. I want you to talk. What's your name? Every Monday Don night. Don Lemon, full of... <laughs>